Okay, hello everyone. Let me start by saying happy, happy, happy new year <laughs> and welcome to the online service of the Church of Infinite Spirit. I'm Reverend Lauren Skye. I'm one of the founders of this church. Our community has been meeting since 1999 and it's our mission as a church to inspire spiritual freedom by supporting people in knowing themselves as spiritual beings and as a part of the consciousness that creates this universe. And we support the joyous transformation that comes from that knowing of self as spirit. We hope to recapture the true intention of church as a respite from the noise of life, as a space of remembrance of our spiritual nature and as a place of joyful connection. We are non-dogmatic and non-judgmental. There's no punishment, reward, or control energy here. We respect your divine right to create your own reality and manage your own energy just the way you choose. It's always a take what you can use and leave the rest environment. When we share, it's with the intention of inspiring you to find your own truth, not necessarily to agree with ours. We always start our time together with a short meditation, so let's do that now. We love meditation in our community. Meditation is so powerful in that it invites us out of the stories we're telling ourselves about what's true and invites us into that deep place of spiritual truth, access, and information where we have the power to change our stories and change our lives. And doing it together adds an extra dimension of power to the process. So we'll walk through a short four-step process now to come present as spirit and shift our energies. If you wanna participate, it's helpful to close your eyes and place your feet flat on the floor. If placing your feet flat on the floor just isn't for you, never mind, do it your way. The first step of this four-step process is grounding. We're gonna close our eyes, take a big deep breath. As we prepare the body to ground, you might scan your body. It's always giving you incredible information about the energies that you're carrying. You might notice how you feel, neck tight, loose, shoulders, happy, not. Just give yourself a little once over. Hello to your arms, your chest, your gut, so informative your legs, the chair, your feet on the floor. Begin to notice specifically your spine and the base of your spine. The base of your spine is the back of the first chakra energy center and it's the place from which we will ground. Grounding happens with our imagination simply by pretending. Would you imagine or pretend a colored beam of light growing from the base of your spine. This colored beam of light is gonna grow from the spot where if you had a tail, your tail would start. Would you grow this colored beam of light straight down? It's gonna go through your chair, the floor of the room you're sitting in, the building. It's gonna go all the way into the earth and all the way down to the center of the earth. Grounding is an imaginary connection from the first chakra energy center to the center of the earth. Imagine that color beam of light kind of grabs hold at the center of the earth, stabilizing you. Grounding stabilizes the whole chakra system and it invites us as spiritual beings more into our bodies. And perhaps most importantly, this grounding cord, the connection, becomes a conduit for energy we don't need to be carrying. So much of the pain and stress that we experience is simply energy recycling through the chakra system. This grounding cord gives it a place to go and earth receives with gratitude. That which we release to the center of the earth is recycled into neutral creative force. So we're not throwing our pain into the earth. The act of holding it makes it pain. Once we let go, the energy can be neutralized. So we're grounding, a connection from the base of your spine to the center of the earth. If a colored beam of light doesn't work for you, 
try doing it with a tree root or plant stem, something more earthy. No matter what you choose, it will work to clear from your space, your body, chakras and aura, any energy you don't need to be carrying as long as you're willing to let go. You could even intend in your inner world, I am willing. I let go of anything I don't need to be carrying, freeing myself to be more of myself. Good job. The next step in this four-step process is to open the sixth chakra energy center. The sixth chakra sits in the middle of our heads, kind of behind our eyes, between our ears. Physically, it's a spot called the pineal gland, deep in the center of head. And it's the location of the sixth chakra energy center. And all we need to do to open our sixth chakra is give it some attention. Place our focus in the middle of our heads. We can be scattered in time, space. And when we focus in the center of head, kind of bring our power back to ourselves, open the abilities of the sixth chakra energy center, clairvoyance, clear seeing, knowing our own answers. Again, do it by imagining. Imagine being in the middle of your head. Good. The next step of this four-step process is to manage the energy fields around us, our aura fields. Everything emanates energy, people for sure, but also objects. And there's even residual energy from events and emotions and encounters and uh, the psychic weather, so to speak. So a great way to manage that is to manage our own aura. And again, we do it by pretending. Would you pretend or imagine that you're sitting inside a big soap bubble or eggshell? And it's big. If you could stretch your arms to the sides, you'd touch it. Kind of like personal space would be. Off to the sides, top and bottom, this big bubble around you, an aura bubble. I like the image of a Tootsie Roll pop. The rounding cord is the stick, the aura bubble as the lollipop, and you as the delicious center. In the paradigm of information that we work with, what energies are housed in your body, chakras, aura, this personal universe of yours, whatever energies you're carrying are reflected back to you beautifully in your experience of life. So we can create change from the inside out by changing the energy we're carrying and we'll get a different reflection from life. We've been releasing down the grounding cord, <clears throat> pardon me, We've been releasing down the grounding cord. So now let's receive, let's bring in some energy we would want in our personal universe of reality. Notice for you, what's an energy that you'd like more of in your personal universe? It's a new year, what would you enjoy? Maybe more fun, more calm, more balance. That's a good one. More love, always room for love. Abundance, clarity, anything at all. Notice the energy of words. Words represent particular vibrations of energies. Would you imagine a word that represents a vibration of energy you'd like more of? And here's how to create it, receive it, and bring it into your reality. Above your head, would you imagine a big golden ball of light, like a big gold sun? Take the word that represents the energy that you'd like to experience and literally imagine writing it across the sun. J-O-I, L-O-V-E. Pick one word if you would. I'll explain why in a minute. And watch what happens. As you write that word across the sun, the sun will absorb it. It'll multiply it. It will become a big golden sun of the vibration you've chosen. Kind of like dropping food coloring into water. The water becomes the color. Drop a word into a sun, the sun becomes the word. 
it's nice to use one word at a time so you can really experience and get to know the vibration as you receive it. To receive it, imagine reaching up and poking a hole in the bottom of that sun or simply set it right into your body and let the energy dissipate. This golden light, let it come right in and fill you. Let it come in and fill up your head and neck and shoulders, all your cells and the spaces between your cells. Let it come in and fill your torso, your arms, your chest. Let it come all the way down, fill up your butt in the chair, all the way down through your legs, to your knees, to your toes. And if there's excess, it can spill into the aura bubble around you. But you may notice that as that energy comes in, it is integrated into your being. So there's always room for more. This is how simple it is to change your energy and change your experience. Let go, intend what you'd like, and then receive it. At New Year time, there's a lot of looking forward to the future. So let's add a step about the future here. One more big gold sun. Let me say before we do, the future isn't knowable because it isn't formed. The future is not some secret that can be uncovered by a select few. It's literally undecided until we create it through free will and choice. Some timelines may be more likely than others, but that which has not yet unfolded is always a fluid range of possibility. The future is created in present time, moment to moment to moment. So let's add a piece to our meditation today to be more here and now. Would you create another one of those golden balls of light, big gold sun above your head? <clears throat> And this time, imagine the big gold sun is like a magnet to gather your energy across time. We came home some to the present moment by opening the sixth chakra. Let's get some more energy home to the present time body where reality is created. So you can imagine this golden sun attracting your energy. Maybe it even has a magnet inside with your name on it. And it's bringing you back from the past and bringing you back from the future. And notice, as you come forward from the past, you are not bringing the pain of painful times into your space. You're taking your energy out of that pain. And you're not negating joyful memories. You still have them. And the joy from them can fuel you up in present time. So imagine the sun calling you home to the moment. Once again, when you're ready, would you pop it or drop it? Pop it and let that energy stream into your body. The best energy for your body, your very own energy. Or you could simply let that sun set right into you and fill up, fill up, fill up. Golden light coming in from your head to your toes. Receive, receive more and more of yourself and notice but that energy is integrated into your being. So there's always room for more. Lovely. Notice how you feel. A little calmer, more present maybe. In the paradigm of information that we work with, this power to create is always within you. You might want to stay right here in this little meditation space as you receive today's message. Or you might want to open your eyes and stretch your body. Look at the screen. See everyone in their boxes or their names. Now that we're here, let's talk. We hold church on the first Sunday of every month. And on the first Sunday of every year, our community traditionally has one more holiday to kind of close the holiday season. We have Validation Day. 
Validation Day reminds us to allow what is setting the stage for change from a place of love rather than fear. And we're reminded to exercise this incredible power that we have to choose. Validation Day has been somewhat of our counter to the negative energy that can surround New Year's and resolutions and the whole improvement thing. There's a lot less of that around this year and maybe that's one of the gifts of COVID. But it's still present, that message that we aren't good enough as we are. That message exploits our natural desire to seek change and growth and healing and tries to deflect that energy to get us to buy products and services. It's easy for our natural desire for growth to be skewed with self-judgment or punishment, not just at this time of year, but anytime we are particularly vulnerable. That whole idea that I should do this or that, or sometimes more relentless, that I should not do this or that, I'll be a better person when I do this or don't do that. It all generally doesn't work. And even though most people in spiritual communities don't do much of the resolution thing, and some of us might even think we're immune to that force in the culture, it is there, lurking, inviting us into thoughts that are against ourselves, just so we'll buy something, a product or an idea, or stay programmable in some way. Of course, most all of us do have desires for change and intentions for self-evolution, and that's wonderful. It's part of the human journey. But there's much more potential for manifestation when we approach those desires with validation instead of not good enough. And so we have Validation Day instead to remind us to approach change, ourselves, and life with the vibration of validation. Today will be our 18th validation day. We started in 2003. So what is validation? Validation is a, vibra a vibration. It's a frequency of energy like joy or pain or grace. It's one of the many flavors of energy and it's always a choice. In a way, validation is saying yes. Validation acknowledges what is instead of naming it wrong. It's a form of non-resistance. Pain is sticky and pain obstructs energy flow. So when it comes to desires for self-evolution, for creation, for new manifestations, it's so much better to begin at loving ourselves right where we are. No improvements, stepping aside from the message is, I'm not good enough, I'm messed up, I'm fat, I'm broke, whatever. <laughs> you know what messages I mean. We'll right now be bombarded with the usual media messages about how we're not good enough, particularly about our bodies. This happens twice a year at New Year time and in the spring. At our local grocery store, there are now workout clothes in the spot where the cookies and chocolates were just last week. So it's good to remember that those messages are a part of the game right now. And that many of us, even if we think we're immune, we got our grounding cords, we got our bubbles, we got our tools. It's a big wave, it's a strong force and it's easy to get caught from time to time. So we separate from that and we move from judgment to validation where real and lasting change can happen and can happen smoother and faster. When we are validating ourselves, when we're at peace with ourselves, and when we're at peace with what is, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> when we're at peace with what is, we might choose to create change, but we'd be creating the change from a place of knowing that we deserve all the wonderful things that being alive can bring. We might treat our bodies better, sure. We might manage money better, Sure, but those actions would be expressions of self-love and self-care, not a seeking being good enough, because that can't be found. Being good enough can only be recognized as already true. And if we're coming from a base of validation, 
we're safe to unearth the pain that might have caused behaviors in the first place because we're treating ourselves well. Unearthing and releasing the pain that's being expressed in something that's against ourselves is the true key to change. So validation is really helpful in our relationships with ourselves. Can you imagine? I say yes to me as I am. I resist nothing about myself. From that foundation, what would I like to create? It's an entirely different universe than this or that is wrong with me and I need to fix it. So we can bring validation into our relationships with ourselves. Validation is also a great antidote to resistance. Resistance says no to what is. This thing needs to change in order for me to be okay. We've all heard that what we resist persists, but I'd take that further and say that what we resist controls us. When we give our okayness away, we give our peace away, we're controlled by what we've given it to, whether it's a person, a person acting a certain way, our body looking a certain way, a certain number on the scale, a certain number in the bank account, a certain life situation, or a certain pandemic. When we say no, I can't be okay till that's gone, we're toast. We've given our power away. With validation, we can have what is. Validation says, yes, this is. And I can be okay in a universe where this is. So validation is very freeing. One of my current opportunities to choose validation involves my cat, Abigail Mute. Her name is Abigail Mute. She's not mute, but she didn't speak for three days when we first got her. So I named her Abigail Mute. She's actually extremely talkative. <laughs> Three times in the last two months, Abigail Mute has walked to the brink of death and come back. Now, it looks like she's staying, at least for now, but we'll see. She's 15 years old and has manifested some health issues. One of those issues will be her exit door back to spirit at some point. Her journey has helped me come to validate her imminent exit. I've moved from not just no, but hell no to her going to yes, I can have it. I can validate her step. She'll go when it's time. I'll do all I can within reason. And so it is. And yes, it will hurt deeply when it's time. Validation isn't denial. It's allowing what is. Of course, one obvious opportunity we all have to choose validation is in our relationship with COVID and the pandemic restrictions. It just is. If we withhold our peace from ourselves until it's done, that's gonna be a much longer and rougher ride than it needs to be. And again, validation is not denial. It doesn't mean that we deny when things are challenging. In times of challenge, validation allows us to move through the challenge with highest potentials for outcomes, greatest opportunity for growth by naming it, by saying, yes, this is happening. This is a challenge, a steep part of the hike on my adventure of life. It may seem counterintuitive to a mind that wants to fight what is, but allowing what is creates more potential for change because none of the life force is going to fighting. It's all going toward creation. That capacity to allow what is arises from spiritual perspective. When we know ourselves as spiritual beings in the journey of incarnation, allowing what is becomes much easier. When something needs to be over right now and I won't be okay until it is, we're powerless. This is such an important spiritual concept. When I give my okayness away, I'm controlled by what I've given it to. So validation uplifts any situation, helps us in our relationships with ourselves, and also supports new beginnings. Validation sets the seed of a creation at just that, validation. 
instead of resistance to the past. When validation is a springboard, energy flows easier. When we create in resistance to the past or in resistance to present time, that, you know, just get me out of here attitude, that creation is seeded at resistance. And everything within the seed shows up in the process and in the outcome, unless it's lovingly pruned away. When we create with validation, with being okay with what's been or what is, taking the learning and moving forward, the creation is seeded quite differently. And that seed blossoms differently and the outcome feels different. Validation is a vibration and it's a vibration we can choose. Resistance is a vibration and that's a vibration we can choose. In creation, in reality, in our experience, it all comes down to vibration. Every desire, every intention, everything we want is about vibration. Very little of it is about the actual thing itself. It's about the vibration we imagine the thing will bring. Right? We might want money. Why? Maybe money brings peace or freedom, maybe a relaxation or sense of security. We may want relationship. Why? Because we imagine the relationship brings belonging, companionship, perhaps security. Maybe a fulfillment of career brings prosperity, self-expression. Nothing really brings anything. We bring it out of ourselves and express it through these things. We can lay the groundwork of manifestation by practicing the vibrations we want to experience and by allowing ourselves to become expressors and attractors of what we desire in addition to being proactive seekers. What we're truly seeking vibrationally is already within us as spiritual beings. Otherwise, it wouldn't really be of interest to the journeying soul. So in our meditation today, let's play with this idea of vibration and validation. This meditation will be a little longer than the usual uh, church meditation. So if you'd like, just say yes to that. <laughs> if you find it's going a little too long for you, just open your eyes, close them again, stick with it or not. But let's go within now. Would you close your eyes if you'd like? If you'd like to participate, close your eyes, place your feet on the floor. Give your body a big deep breath. Hmm. Check in with your grounding cord, that connection from the base of your spine all the way down to the center of the earth. If it has popped off, you can always reimagine it. You recreate it by reimagining it. A colored beam of light or perhaps a tree, tree root or plant stem extending from your tail spot all the way to the center of the planet. Imagine being in the middle of your head. Imagine being cozy in your bubble around you. If you'd like to make your bubble a little stronger, you could even imagine bringing it to a color. My bubble today is purple as it often is. What color would you like yours to be? Pink, blue, yellow, green, red. Maybe you want to keep it clear. Relax into the idea of the grounding cord, center of head, and bubble. You don't have to monitor it. Let's start off with a big gold sun of validation. So above your head, would you imagine that big gold ball of light like a big gold sun? The gold sun is so big that part of it is in your aura bubble and part of it extends beyond your aura bubble. We want a gold sun that's so big it couldn't possibly fit in your aura bubble. 
make that gold sign really big and then write the word validation across it. V-A-L-I-D-A-T-I-O-N. Typos are fine. <laughs> the sun will autocorrect. <laughs> Let that sun absorb, match, and become a big gold sun of validation as it breathes in that word and multiplies it. We've talked about validation kind of intellectually. Let's experience it energetically. Would you pop the sun or set it? Receive validation. Notice what it's like as an energy. How does it flow for you as it comes in and you receive validation into your head, neck, shoulders, all through your body and the chakras at the same time? Your chest and guts, your arms and hands, your legs and feet, absorbing, integrating the energy. If there is excess, let it fill the bubble around you. We're going to bring in some energies. But before we do, I'd like to make space by getting rid of a few energies that many of us carry. Those energies are would have, could have, and should have. <laughs> kind of like different forms of regret. I would have done this could have done that. I should have done that. These energies are never in present time and they are never helpful. Sure, we might learn from experience, but holding those three vibrations, not the way to do it. So let's drop them. You could imagine dropping would have, could have, and should have right down your grounding cord. Another way to release energy is to imagine a balloon in front of you or uh, even another bubble, a smaller version of your, a bubble in front of you, or any kind of container, even a trash bag will work. As you envision or imagine or pretend this balloon, bubble, or trash bag, you're creating it energetically. And with your intention, you could imagine, I am putting all forms of would have, could have, and should have in this bubble, balloon, trash bag container. Let it go. Letting it go means stopping using it against yourself. It's a choice. Only you can make that choice. I invite you to make it now. This might be something you take with you into your meditations in the early part of this year. If you have a lot of would have, could have, should have, maybe it's time to really clean house. Let's let this balloon bubble trash bag fill, get as big as it wants to be. With would have, could have, and should have. And then imagine tossing it away or maybe blow it away into the sky. Watch the balloon bubble trash bag get high in the sky. And when it's high in the sky, imagine popping it or bursting the container. Again, when we let go, everything changes. When you burst the container or destroy the container, the energy is neutralized. It's only a challenging energy when you hold it. So perhaps letting go of would have, could have, and should have has created a little space or a lot of space for you to receive something new. What to receive? Would you notice something you imagine creating in 2021? And if you imagine that thing manifested, how will you feel? What do you imagine that thing will bring? Will you be feeling happy? Will you feel prosperous? Will you feel fulfilled? Maybe you'll feel freedom or joy, or authenticity. Notice a word that represents the energy you imagine you'll feel. Become it now. This makes the manifestation so much smoother and easier, and your peace is not withheld from you until 
that manifestation happens. You become aligned with it by being the energies you imagine it would bring. You know how with the big gold sun. Create a big gold sun above your head. What's the feeling? What's the word? Distill the feeling down to a word. Write the word across the sun. Allow the sun to match, multiply, and become the word. And then receive it. Pop it, drop it, bring it into you. Let that golden sun, golden light come in, fill you up. Those of you with information about chakras, you might fill up the chakras first and then let it expand through the body. If you don't have information about chakras, that's fine. Bring it in as we have, head to toe. Head, neck, shoulders, chest, arms, torso. Legs, knees, feet. It just changed your energy. Let's stay here another moment. Think about the coming year. As you consider this coming year, what are the energies you'd like to experience and explore as a spiritual being in the journey of Earth? You might consider noticing three words that represent three vibrations you'd like to seed the year with. You might notice more than three. I can hold three. <laughs> but if you can hold four, five, six, seven, whatever you can hold is right for you, I can hold three. Maybe it's a year of love, peace, and prosperity. Maybe it's a year of clarity, focus, and manifestation. Maybe it's a year of openness, receiving, and allowing. It's all about, about vibration, and you get to choose the vibration without a moment's thought to how it will happen. Not the form, we're looking at the energy. You don't have to know what it will look like. Bring it down to the level of vibration. What are your three words for the year? You can always change your mind later, but I invite you to pick three or however many is right for you and give those vibrations to yourself now. Maybe one you already picked in the last exercise we just did. Maybe one you picked at the beginning. If you remember, we filled in with a gold sun at the beginning of this talk. That might be one. Or maybe it's three brand new ones. Let's take a moment here to give ourselves those three. I know you might have more than three. I'm just gonna play with three for purposes of this exercise. So take word number one, big gold sun, word on the sun, sun becomes the word, pop or drop and receive. Be willing as you receive, if reasons come up that you can't have that vibration, yeah, but this, yeah, but that, those reasons can be dropped down the grounding cord or put into a balloon or a bubble or a trash bag and disposed of. There can be this vicious circle where the reasons feed the energy we don't want and the energy we don't want creates more reasons. Break the cycle by not engaging the reasons. Just receive the energy you want. Good job, how about word number two? Word number two, big gold sun. Word number two, into the sun. Let the sun become the word. Ah, and receive again. Watch for reasons, ignore them. Dispose of them. And one more, word number three, big gold sun, word in the sun, sun becomes the word, pop or drop, receive head to toe. And if you want, as the energies are integrated into your being and there's always room for more, you could top this off with one more big gold sun of validation. Mm. 
Notice your experience. Notice how you feel. You have this incredible power to choose. I would invite you to exercise your incredible power to choose. I would suggest that each day this year, you ground and bring in big gold suns of these vibrations, maybe once a day. See what happens. This is a practice I embrace every year, my words for the year. And I set myself up for success by creating reminders. I write them down. I have them pop up on my phone from time to time. Watch what happens when they aren't forgotten by February 15th. So often, we start down a road, but don't continue. If you like this idea, you might make that agreement with yourself. My words for the year, daily. You miss a day, pick it up the next day. You could stay right here, or if you'd like, you could open your eyes and stretch. Look at the names on the screen, people in their boxes. Validation is a favorite vibration, and a vibration I imagine we all enjoy is prosperity, which leads me to my transition into the offertory portion of the service. If we were in person, this is the time in the church service where we would literally pass our two baskets and ask for contrib contributions to the Church of Infinite Spirit. Since we can't pass physical baskets now, we're accepting donations with deep gratitude on our website, innerconnection.org, on the sanctuary page. Please consider supporting us if it feels right in your heart. And we always ask that you contribute just what feels good from a place of joy, not from a place of obligation. We are a nonprofit, and the donations that you send are tax deductible. You'll get a receipt from me in email. Please know that your contributions do make a difference and even small donations mean a lot. They help us with our big website stuff and all the other weird expenses that make spaces like this possible. We appreciate your contributions deeply and we trust that the totality of today's contributions will re return to each of you many, many fold. A lot of times during the uh, in-person church, while the baskets were going around, we would tell jokes or read something. And so today I'd like to read something from a book called Emmanuel's Book. It's book one of Emmanuel's book. And it is this. In the beginning was the word. And the word was yes. Whatever your predicament may be, yes will not solve it. Yes will dissolve it. Yes is not obedience or acquiescence. It is an embrace. I see that passage as a lovely expression of validation. And if you haven't checked out Emmanuel, E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L, I highly recommend them. They're a collective that is channeled. Start with book one or book three and go from there. You will love it. Let's get ready to close our time together today. I wanna invite you to check out our website for upcoming classes and events, innerconnection.org. And I invite you to bring validation into your life and to remember your power to choose, to choose vibration, to seed manifestations with vibrations as you choose and to become what you seek. After this talk, we'll stay on for a little while for some social time for those who'd like to visit if you want to, just stay on the call. I thank you deeply for being here today, both here with me and here in the journey of earth in divine timing. I thank you for your time and attention, two of your most valuable resources in life, and I receive them with honor and gratitude. I'll stop the recording with a bye for now, everyone. Stay on if you'd like, and happy validation day. <laughs>